continue to come down. Once again, we are targeting a soft splashdown in the Indian Ocean uh, around yeah. the, off the west coast metal. Of, of Australia. We can see these beautiful views of planet Earth coming in. Yeah, this is very yeah. different where we Right, had so this time. was flight uh, six, which was the most successful flight of Starship. And yeah, it's true that that was the one where it flew not entirely completely empty. It had a banana in it, such that the uh, professional SpaceX team could have their It's Bananas t-shirts on, um, you know, as they spent uh, a few hundred million dollars of taxpayer money to take a banana to the Indian Ocean. Now, but to be fair, to be fair, they did get all, this. This was by far their most successful flight. I mean, sure, it was completely empty, but the thing did get all the way through in one piece, and it did um, get all the way through, and it got its landing burn, and yeah, then it sort of fell over and uh, caught fire. And so, you know, they're all sitting there sort of happily talking away what a great success it is when that is their rapidly reusable spacecraft. Anyway, this was by far uh, the most successful flight of Starship with flights um, uh, six, sorry, seven, eight and nine all blowing up, basically. Well, not entirely. Uh, six and seven, the upper stage uh, blew up. Uh, seconds or very close to when they were going to cut off their engines and the last flight it was out of control basically the entire way uh, but it did get me you know we did do quite a lot of number crunching on these things just for uh, fun um, but I'd never actually gone through and done all of the energy calculations for uh, the booster and you know how impressive is actually all of this how much energy do i actually lose in that last little bit in fact what is the energy loss profile for all of these vehicles as they come in because the nice thing is you do actually have um all of these numbers down in this corner and once the vehicle is completely empty of course uh to calculate its energy well you know its speed so its energy is half mb squared gotta convert this to meters per second but Okay, fine. And its uh, potential energy is basically MGH. And so, you know, you just put this into meters. And you can calculate its total energy, which is its potential energy plus its kinetic energy. And, yeah, so what, what do these actually look like for uh, Starship? And so I actually have... Uh, let's try this one. Yeah, okay. So this is the booster. And this one I found fascinating because this is not really quite what I was expecting. Um, so the green line is your potential energy for your booster. Your red line is your kinetic energy for your booster. And your yellow line is your total energy for your booster. And what you find is the energy is basically completely flat until this period from about six minutes, 10 seconds to six minutes, 30 seconds ish. And during that time, you basically lose all of your energy. Now, the energy here, yeah, I could have put it in joules, but that means basically nothing to anyone. So I converted this to tons of TNT, which is a far more. Um, it's a, a something that people can relate to. You know, a ton of TNT is a big ass bomb. So, uh, Starship, no, the, the booster, the booster has roughly 25 tons of TNT worth of energy, and then it loses most of that. It loses 90% of that um, in a very short period of time, and the actual burn is like the last 10 seconds or so. So, the amount of uh, energy that you learn in the burn, losing the burn, is only a few tons worth of TNT of energy. And I should stress at this point that gasoline is far more energy dense than TNT. Um, ton of T and T uh, kilogram of TNT is about four megajoules. Four megajoules per kilo is TNT. Gasoline is roughly 10 times that. Uh, so, you know, in terms of the actual fuel 
that you need to burn. It's only a few tons is that last little bit on getting the booster back. Can I get my... Um, yeah. yeah, right, so basically almost all of the energy lost is here, right? This is where you're losing all of the energy in the atmospheric drag, and you see it's between basically 10 kilometers. 10 kilometers is roughly where airplanes fly, okay? So it's when you're in the thick atmosphere. You hit the thick atmosphere, and by 6 minutes 30 seconds, you've basically lost 90% of your energy is here. 6 minutes 10 seconds to 6 minutes 30 seconds. That's when it's basically lost most of its energy. And your velocity comes down to, as eh, is about the speed of sound, but, you know, you get a bit more drag. By the time you lighten up your engines, you are sort of subsonic. So it's basically, uh, th this is about the weight of an airliner, and it's basically, um, you know, the energy to stop it. So that, that was that's kind of interesting, right? Um, that... Again, most of your energy is lost in in the viscosity of the air once you get down to about 10 kilometers. So the one that's much more interesting is when you actually sort of compare the total energy of the booster, that's the yellow line, to the the little guy, the the one in orbit. So this is the energy of your booster, which weighs about 300 tons, and most of that's just the altitude of the booster. Um, virtually nothing in, in, of there is actually velocity. This is the energy of Starship. Uh, yeah, the guy in uh, almost orbit. So this is this is flight six. This was their most successful flight, um, and it's more or less a straight line. The loss of energy is basically a straight line, um, but you can see that the energy of the guy in orbit is getting on for a hundred or so times a hundred. And it, so the, the, uh, the, this is getting on for a kiloton of TNT. Um, this is like 20 tons of TNT. So yeah, it, it's a couple of percent of the, the energy of the upper stage. And of course, you can break that down into... Uh, the, this is the exact same plot for the upper stage. So the yellow line is the total energy... Red line is the kinetic energy. Green line is your potential energy. That's basically your altitude. Um, so virtually none of your energy is in altitude if you're Starship. Virtually all of it uh, is lost in the heat shield. And the actual burn, burn that they have, you know, the one that lands, the, lands it in the ocean, is, is minuscule. It's like one ton of fuel or something is all they actually need to land this thing. So by far the most impressive thing is the actual loss of energy via the heat shield. That's that's all of this bit. The bit where it kind of gets all melty and sparkly and um yeah, that's yeah, all that burning metal. This was this was their most successful one, by the way. Um and lots of burning metal. Right. If you can see anything coming off the vehicle. <clears throat> the white sparks is burning metal. Um, and you get burning metal almost immediately. And you get burning metal all the way down to... Uh, yeah, there are bit, bit bits like this where it's it's coming off in great globs. In fact, it, there, there's enough vapor pressure of metal oxide here that basically it's fogging uh, up the camera. What's fogging up the camera there is burning metal. Attack, get you a little bit more range as you're coming through. And so this will yeah. this will be just a test. Anyway, quite how um, the 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 next three flights after this, um, <clears throat> those are the ones that's kind of sort of exploded. And when you see all the burning metal coming back through the atmosphere, that's all the energy that you've got to lose through the heat shield. So, uh, th this is by far the the most impressive um, or the most difficult thing here is um, losing all of this energy. It's also, you know, on their latest flight, which spins out of control almost immediately, um, SpaceX make a point of several times saying that they're making the vehicle safe by jettisoning the fuel for the landing burn. And the fuel for the landing burn is like, I, I did the calculations, it's like uh, half, a, half of 1% of the vehicle's energy is 
the the fuel for the landing burn. So uh, by jettisoning the fuel, you make an operational insignificant difference to the energy of the vehicle. Um, but it's that sort of Orwellian thing where uh, SpaceX, they their commentary, they just will not say anything that um, it, it, it's the most new speak, uh, new speak um, thing ever. And maybe the best example of that is flight one. So I went through flight one and this is your booster altitude. So the booster cuts off or this is flight six, this red line here. So engines cut off at about two and a half minutes at an altitude of about 65 kilometers. So when did they know with flight one that this thing was completely off the rails? Um, and the answer is within the first 30 seconds, you know that you, you've only got like half of the altitude that you should have. You know immediately that this thing is not going to successfully stage or do anything. Um, and um, the first mention that SpaceX have that something is not quite right is at 3 minutes 40 seconds when the vehicle is first of all falling to earth at a, a frightening rate and is in an uncontrolled spin um, at a height of eh, 30 kilometers planes fly roughly 10 ish and yeah atmospheric pressure here is roughly a quarter of what it is at, at sea level down here uh, you know so you're literally uh, Less than a minute away from hitting the ground is the first time they actually mention that some you know they're, they're, the vehicle seems to have had a, a, a the vehicle seems to be in a roll. It's I think what they actually say, but um, yeah, I I absolutely hate how um, Ministry of Truth. This is Ministry of, of Truth stuff that you're not allowed to say anything bad about um, the, the, the mission. So I, I think it's the one previous to this. It was four or five. Um, actually, no, hang on. I'm getting confused. It's the one after this. The one after this uh, blows up, yeah, Flight 7. Flight 7 is the one where they lose control of the vehicle and it takes them like a full seven minutes before they acknowledge that uh, the, the second stage has blown up. By which time, it's already not only re-entered the atmosphere and showered burning debris over the Gulf of Mexico, uh, it's probably getting to the point where it's hitting the ground. It's the first time that SpaceX acknowledged that they might have lost control of the vehicle. And the only one, the only time, and then they had this in the last one as well, Flight 9, um, that you can see from the second they cut off the engine, the vehicle is out of control. It's in a spin. It's picking up rates. Uh, there is just time after time you can see that the vehicle is out of control. And they just do not mention it till half an hour into the flight when you see the vehicle is spinning so quickly that... It, it, it's impossible to deny, and that's the first time that SpaceX actually acknowledged something might be wrong. Anyway, so what did SpaceX learn uh, from all of this? Because they, you know, whenever anything goes wrong, they say this is a great learning experience. Well, I had 10 great learning experiences now, and I think the thing that we're about to learn is that trial and error is a really dumb way of making rockets. Anyway, so yeah, this is just some of the background numbers that are going to go into the next video. Um, it's probably only going to be on one or two of these plots. But uh, yeah, so this is, some of this stuff I actually found really quite interesting. Uh, that, you know, it, it's really this very short window where the booster loses most of its energy. And in terms of, you know, you put these up on the same scale. This is your booster energy. This is your upper stage energy. It, there's just no comparison between the two. So, yeah, getting the booster back really is the low energy portion of this. And the actual landing burn itself uh, gets rid of almost no energy. 
you know, the party trick, is, if you like, is just relighting the engines in the correct 10-second window, which, yeah, that's that, that is, it was more than a tip of the hat. But anyway, so, um, yeah, just some background numbers. Hope you enjoyed them, and see you next time.